Today on Paleolithic Productions, we're going to be making some Neanderthal weapons, specifically a Neanderthal knife. So let's get started. So we have some big pieces of stone and we're going to be trying to hit off these things called Lavalwa points. And what a Lavalwa point really is, is just two converging flakes and then we want to hit off the thing in the middle. You should see on the, gra uh, the graphic on screen right now what it looks like. So that's what we're going after today and it looks simple but it's a lot harder to do in actuality. So I'll show you a core that I already have set up. So this is a core that's already set up to be made to a Lavalwa point. And you can see there's two flakes taken off of these sides. So then it converges right here. And we also have a flake taken off of the middle. So hypothetically, we're gonna hit off one big flake and the tip will end somewhere down here if we do it right. And that will be a large pointy spearhead that will be you know, a Neanderthal spear point. So this is a core that's already set up to be made to a Lavalwa point. And you can see there's two flakes taken off of these sides. So then it converges right here. And we also have a flake taken off of the middle. So hypothetically, we're gonna hit off one big flake and the tip will end somewhere down here if we do it right. And that will be a large pointy spearhead that will be you know, a Neanderthal spear point. Okay, so here's a core that I struck that Lavawa point off of, and you can see it did pretty much what I wanted it to do. I mean, it ran a little longer than I thought, so it doesn't necessarily have the sharpest point. We could retouch it, but I think a lot of Neanderthals would have just left that on there and said, hey, that's sharp, we're gonna use it. But yeah, it worked out pretty well. You can see the central flake here that makes it easier to haft, and then these two uh, converging edges that converge all the way over here. But yeah, quite a useful little tool. And it's really interesting how it fits right back into the core just like that and you can barely even tell that it left because it breaks at such a fine uh, fine area so yeah it's pretty cool for the sake of this video we're going to be using this uh, big old flake for a neanderthal knife you know it wouldn't be as good as a projectile because obviously it has that tip that's not necessarily the sharpest so we're going to turn this into a knife okay so here's the point right here and i want to haft it to this piece of wood but the problem is the wood is about as thick as the point is at the base so we're actually gonna do a different kind of hafting. Instead of putting a notch into here and then putting this into a notch, we're just gonna attach the wood to the point using just glue. See this pine pitch glue I've been working on, um, here's an example right here. It's uh, extremely strong and it's full of fibers. I put a bunch of like hemp fibers in it so it becomes basically like a kind of fiberglass material that can hold, like this isn't attached through any, uh, anything else besides the glue yet it's really strong. I don't really want to, it's sharp, but like I can't break this if I tried because it's just uh, a bunch of pine resin, which is just, uh, pine resin itself is really hard and then you mix it with that, those fibers and beeswax and it's just this amazing substance. So I know that the um, Australian Aboriginals, they would just attach their Lylera points straight to a piece of wood like this and then with glue in the middle. And uh, it worked really well for them apparently. They were using them for a long, long time. So. We're gonna try out that method of hafting. I've never done it before, but I was planning on doing it anyways at some point, so this is gonna be a good excuse. But first we gotta shape this into a handle-like shape. So this is the piece of wood we're gonna be using. I just wanted like a diagonal-ish handle, make it about yay long, and then, uh, what did I say diagonal? I, I wanted to uh, taper down a little bit, just like that, just a tiny little bit. Nothing crazy. And boom, that should be a good handle right there. It might even be too long, let me... Yeah, we'll cut it down. Cause there's gonna be that glue in between. All right, now I'm just gonna cut this out on the bandsaw. All right, now check out this classic method for uh, making a handle rounded. So you just hold a, your pencil like this and then you draw even lines on every side. This is how I used to make fishing lures. Go like, oh, you can't see it. Go like this on every side, flip it around, and then boom, we just have to take off those lines with the chisel, and then we got like a squared uh, good handle blank, and then we just have to take a file, and then it's basically done. Okay, we're just going to chisel off the sides. Now it's fully roughed out, so I'm just going to get a piece of sandpaper to just clean up the edges. Pretty simple. Okay, so here's the handle. It's not perfect, but you know, I mean, we're making the weapons in Neanderthal, so it doesn't have to be. And uh, we're just gonna half this with glue eventually here. So I'm just gonna have to go heat up the glue and then we'll, we're gonna start applying it. 
All right, so we got the glue heating up in this little pot here. And uh, as you might be able to see, it's just full of these uh, fibers from this cordage. I don't, is this hemp? I don't really know, but it's really good because they're really fibrous. And you just uh, cut them into like one inch lengths and spread them up and then put them in the uh, pine resin, beeswax, and charcoal. And it makes a phenomenal glue. Like, like I was mentioning with this right here, like this thing is on here so good. I couldn't even take it off if I wanted to, even if I were to hack at something. So I'm almost positive that uh, ancient people used to put a lot of cordage into their glue. It just makes a lot of sense. But I have to look at the literature to see if Neanderthals actually did this or if we know if they did this. You know, it's the fossil record after all, or archaeological record, so it's not complete. But um, yeah, let's, uh, let's wait for this glue to heat up. Okay, so now it's half the handle to the blade. This is going to be pretty difficult, I, I think. So we're going to need the glue to cool down quite a bit so we can start forming the actual handle or the whatever, the haft. This stuff is really just quite miraculous because it gets really, really hard. But since it's like hot, hot activated, uh, you can work with it in so many cool ways. So I'm just going to, I just put a little bit of fibers bound together with some glue and I'm just going to attach it. I'm going to let this dry and then we're going to come back and add more layers once it holds up. All right. So this kind of already would work, but obviously it's not hafted in there very well. So now we're going to add in that layer of fibrous uh, glue on the outside. I'm just going to get some fibers going in one direction. So this is a really big coating right now, but as, it's, as it dries, we'll spread it out and make it form uh, a lot better. It's nice that it's kind of cool out here because it helps it dry a lot faster. But yeah, I think this is going to hold it on, you know, really well. We'll have to test it out a little bit. So I'm just going to let that cool down and then I'll get back to you when it's uh, forming better. All right, so I wet my finger and I'm just going to press around here now, going around the outside. Need some more water. And this really helps it to not stick on your finger. Helps you form it and it, I guess it also cools it down because it's still kind of hot right now. And we just want that transition to be as seamless as possible. <clears throat> Trying to straighten it out a little bit too. But yeah, ever since I figured this out, I mean, I'm going to make stone tools way differently now, or half them way differently at least. This is just the best way. I mean, obviously if you were to make a notch in the wood, that would be better. But um, we'll see how this experiment works out. Because I made some, uh, I have to two Clovis points yesterday in a notch, and I tested this glue versus glue without um, cordage. And I mean, this glue destroyed it. And this really has, long, a lot of people do put cordage in their glue, but um, they only put like, like one centimeter long, uh, like little strands of cordage or something. But I think putting in one inch long strands really helps, especially if you're trying to make something big like this. I mean, if you're doing arrowheads, you wouldn't want that much cordage, but if you're doing axes or spears or knives, I think larger, uh, larger is better terms of the cordage. I'm actually going to take some of this glue off. It's just unnecessary. We have too much actually. And I can still do that. Oh, but look at this. It's so fibrous that it's hard to even take a piece off of it. Okay. Now I'm going to make a different kind of beeswax to actually just cover. Or, I mean, all right. Now I'm going to make a different kind of pine pitch to just cover the outside of these uh, weapons to make a more smooth finish. I'm just going to use pine resin. It's a little bag of it. And then I'm just gonna mix in a little bit of animal fat too, or I mean beeswax. You can use animal fat, but I just get beeswax, it's a lot easier. And you can really just eyeball it. You don't need too much. I think I actually put too much. <laughs> and, uh, and it makes a really, really good glue. All right, so now we're just gonna cover the knife in a final coating of uh, just beeswax and pine syrup, or pine, uh, pine sap, because it will, uh, Kind of just seal everything together and have a much smoother transition, basically. So that's the idea here. I don't have like a tool to put on, so I'm just using a stick. All right, so here's the finished product. This is a Neanderthal Lavawa knife. It looks pretty good. You know, it's a big stone flake, sharp edges on this side, this side, and even a sharp tip. And then we got a big bundle of pine glue and fibers and stuff holding on this little wood handle. So I think this would be a super useful tool. Um, it's really strong. Like, I mean, I can't, 
I can't rip this off. This will be in my video on the main channel, uh, Neanderthal Weapons. And I wonder how we're going to test this out. I haven't thought of it yet, but yeah, it looks pretty good and I'm happy with the results. Let me know what you guys think. Is this a good way to haft a stone tool? <clears throat> I just put like a lot of muscle into that and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't undo that uh, binding right there. It's a really strong connection and it's pretty comfortable too, you know. Pine glue is a nice thing to hold on to. It's not sticky or anything like that. It's just, it just feels kind of like really hard rubber or like really soft plastic maybe. I don't know. It's cool. I could totally use this as a tool for, you know, cutting up a deer, a mammoth. Let me zoom out so you can actually see me. Um, yeah, you could totally use this as a cutting tool. It's really sharp. You know, once it got dull, you could hit a new edge onto it. I think Neanderthals were doing that. And yeah, looks pretty accurate. You know, I could totally imagine a Neanderthal running around with one of these. So thanks for watching this video. You can watch the other video too where I make a Neanderthal spear point. That one's pretty good as well. And uh, make sure to check out the video on the main channel as well. I think it's going to do very well. Put a lot of effort into that one. So thanks for watching.